Hello and welcome back to Respect is Growing. My name is Vanessa and right here we have my husband. Hey guys. He's in my video today because as the title shows, we're kind of letting you know a little bit more about ourselves and sharing some of our background. As you can see, we yeah. are an interracial couple. I grew up here in Canada and Ronald actually grew up in Uganda. So yeah. we do have some differences, but we like to celebrate those differences and this is one way we can do that. So let's get started. We have about three sort of topics we're going to discuss and then we can talk about cultural differences, etc when we get into this. Before I forget, any of my followers or anyone who's been here before, you're gonna notice something a little different. Yep. I decided that I wanted to change and uh, certainly went for it. Well, it'll be shorter. Uh, this is sort of with my natural uh, hair wave. I, I don't really want to straighten my hair too much, but either way, I'm loving it. There's absolutely nothing here for Liam to grab, or very little at the very, <laughs> at least. <laughs> um, and I also just like it because it's like wash and wear. So I don't have to worry about anything except brushing my hair in the morning. That's really not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, she trusted me to play That's with right. the scissors. <laughs> so I That did. is right. Lee, um, Ronald here is my hairdresser. Has been for quite a few years now. Yeah. Contact me by the way. So my <laughs> number is 000. Yeah. 000. Let us know if you're interested <laughs> in having him do your hair soon someday. He's also cut my mom's hair. So. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, that's right. I mean, I've done her, her hair and then your mom's hair as well. So. Mostly after, just mine. But most I've done actually your brother's hair. Or those are on video. That's right. Yeah. Not on video. This one wasn't on video either, but we do have a few videos that you can watch of him cutting my hair. Mm -hmm. Either way, this one was just more of a, okay, Liam's asleep, let's get this done situation. And I was happy to do so because I was getting bored. And you it know what I mean? something shorter, right? Yeah. So like, I'm tired, it's too long and I'm like, honestly, and I love short hair yeah. on a lady. So I'm like, hey. It, it works. I've had this pixie cut before. This, mind you, years ago. I don't even think, maybe we were just married when, when I had this haircut and I liked it then and I just had since had longer hairstyles um, but it's nice to come back to this and like I said wash and wear which mm -hmm. is really key right now I like to simplify wherever I can and even like in the vein of simplification I don't even wear makeup most days or ever <laughs> to be honest I can't tell you the last time I put makeup on so this sort of falls in line with everything <laughs> as you can see it's quite short in the back I'll try and maybe turn here. See? Let us in the comment section below if you like it. Yeah. And if you would let your husband cut your hair. <laughs> I know a lot of people get kind of weirded out about that, but frankly, first of all, I trust him. That's a big one. Second of all, we watch the proper videos that show the, the technique. And then also he's been doing it now for a good while and he has his own knowledge built up in yeah. the process yeah. just so everyone knows maybe you haven't been here before ronald also has a youtube channel it is called cooking with ronald but don't let the name kind of catch you off guard we also do diys on his channel uh, anything sort of around the house that we might be getting up to you can see on there too exactly so i'll be seeing you there guys of course, as usual, give us that like, share, subscribe, of course, a thumbs up. All right, so, question number one. We wrote some of the piece of paper, as you can see. <laughs> so, the first question is, where did you grow up? So, as I've been saying all along, I grew up in Uganda, and uh, that is East Africa, to be specific, as you can see. Uh, so, Uganda is part of the three East African countries and uh it's called and up here uganda is said to be the power of africa if i mean just a little side note here um uh, river nile starts from uganda uh, those of you who know that is oh, yeah, from I, I remember you telling me that I yeah it's that from before. bujagari falls that's where it begins from 
Bujagari. Bujagari Falls. It's a name <laughs> where it begins from. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you also have a very big lake. Uh, it's shared by the three countries again. It's called Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically an amazing country, if you ask me. Um, yeah, in general, that's where I grew up. And uh, me growing up, things were a bit different, of course. I, I, I grew up because uh, my, uh, my, my mom you know, passed away a little earlier and my father passed away first so I didn't actually get to see my father um, uh, so and uh, back then they didn't really take pictures much so that and the little picture they showed me was a very pi little you picture You said he was young right? Yeah, right. yeah I, I, I only saw like a picture of him maybe of maybe two years or three or something like yeah. that so yeah quite different but my mom also passed away eventually as well uh, so it's, it's, it's you know that's how I grew up person so I grew up say from going from family to from my aunties I have a bunch of different aunties so uh, I had like about four of them so one of them where I was you know I go to school there mm -hmm. and then uh, you know and then uh, in the holidays I would go somewhere else to another auntie's and place. And just for reference when he says school he's talking about a boarding school. Oh yes right I was in boarding school. We're not school. sure where <laughs> what's more common wherever you're living yeah, yeah. but for him school means boarding school. Exactly. They and would pay school fees for a semester and that's they would live exactly in the same location. Yeah we'll be at school and I was on school compound for sure that's so right. Uh, sort I, of like resident style if you're more familiar with a Canadian or Western mm -hmm. sense of things you know you'd have your room and then campus would be close that type of thing right yeah so yeah I I mean I went to a few schools those of you if you got and you're watching this video uh, yeah, I went to Intinda primary school that is a primary school that I started off with and uh, this here we say uh, P1, P2 here, they say grade 1, grade 2. So uh, in Tinder, and I intend I went to uh, Chitante for a little bit uh, and uh, for like S1, which is like high school, first class of high school. And after that, S I went. for senior, right? Yes. And then after that, I went to um, uh, Mitiana Secondary School. Uh, no, I, I left before I finished my uh, S4 or, you know, my. Uh, to come to Canada. To come to Canada. So. Yeah. Yeah, so in a nutshell, that's where I grew up and that's how things have gone for me. Yeah, and he, he's been in Canada since he was 18. I grew up in Canada, specifically Ontario, in a small town called Espanola. There's approximately, I don't know if the numbers changed, but it used to be about 5,500 people in this town. Uh, my parents still live there actually, and I have family who live there, so shout out to any Espanola people who might be watching. Being in a small town, I went to uh, first Sacred Heart Elementary School and then the local high school. I had the option of going to Sudbury, which if you're not sure where that is, it's about 45 minutes from Espanola just for high school and I decided not to do that because to be honest I wasn't interested in traveling that much and if you know Canada and you know winters, I didn't really want to be dealing with that. Plus it was a really early morning because you'd have to be at the bus, I believe it was for 6.30 or some ungodly hour and uh, you may not know me, but I am not a morning person. I am much more of a morning person than I have ever been in my life, but that's probably more due to Ronald and his influence on me. <laughs> so no, I just avoided that and I went to the local high school. But growing up in Espanola was really nice because um, we were able to be close. I have an older brother, so we were able to be close to family, both both sides of my family actually. Uh, most directly my dad's side because he has been born and raised and he lived mm -hmm. in Espanola his whole life. Mm -hmm. So I have aunts and uncles, cousins, etc. Uh, we still go there to visit, uh, but obviously we've made different decisions and, and we live here in Southern Ontario. Alright, so question two. Um, actually our next question was supposed to be uh, where <coughs> did you go to school? We kind of have We done combined that, that. Yeah, we combined that already. <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit actually. So but just to go a little bit further, so at the beginning of my, my school I didn't really have shoes. So okay. I was bare feet. I that I remember those kids you see in Africa who have no shoes, that's very real by the way. 
uh, yes, FYI. So you used to walk to school barefoot? I used to, yeah, by, by foot and also barefoot. So uh -huh. <laughs> that's, that's too. Uh, but I know at my auntie's where I grew up, um, actually she passed away, God bless her soul. And uh, speaking of it, these are things I, I, you know, you kind of regret. I was actually back then planning on going back to see uh, yeah. to see her when things happened and, I, and then yeah. she passed away. I did see her once on video, the auntie he's talking about. Yeah. Um, but she, I think by then she was ill. Yeah, apparently she was ill. Uh, um, she wasn't. No, she was. She was an amazing lady. Those of you who know uh, the late uh, Mrs. Nachivinge. Uh, she lived somewhere in Divo, somewhere in Divokoto, um, uh, but she she did amazing towards my life, and I don't know how ever you know uh, thank. Well, you know, changed your, the whole direction of your uh, life. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it is an, another backstory on that that I won't get into, um, okay. but uh, yeah, I came from there. She was she, very important to Ronald, as you can yeah. probably tell. Oh yeah, she was really, really, really. Um, uh, very important to me honestly she did uh, you know it's, it's where i met other different people in this case uh sarah sefalalas and uh that's how we, you know eventually again that's a different story different day when i how i made it to canada mm -hmm. but yeah my, my thing was yeah i walked to school i barely had shoes at, at one at one point and also before i could even go to there to that place um, uh, to my aunties before that I was in a different place and uh, I, I will tell you for a fact that this thing they're real they're not made up when you see people who don't have shoes or people who have slept on uh, grass not uh, a, a mattress I know I've done that uh, slept in the same room with animals like goats sheep and uh, so on and so forth like yeah that has happened uh, these are real things and also those uh, houses you've seen made of uh, tarmac or uh, the little hats you see sort of like um, has, um shanties yes I something guess you like could that say. I guess yeah so okay, where they, pick, they look one. they look like makeshift homes as you can see those pictures that's what we're sort of talking about exactly so those things are very real and uh, I know me growing up I didn't know anything about you know electricity was more like something you see when you go to in that in a little town not yeah. something you have in the house. Also, tell the story of uh, you told me you used to watch TV through a window when it was the neighbors. Yeah, you know, not really a window, more like, yeah, we threw a window, but also, you know, they, they had a, a TV and all, so they kind of, you know, had money, we call them rich people. Yeah. But we have through the window, so making sure we don't, in this case, before my mom passed away, well, she was very careful about that because she was, I don't want to get too close, you might touch, you might break it, and I can never be able to <laughs> afford to pay yeah. for it. Probably, replace it probably should have to make her uh, money for the entire year to pay for a tv <laughs> yeah because the money in uganda is not obviously it's not dollars it's uh, it's shillings, shillings ugandan yeah. shillings yeah and uh obviously canadian money goes a lot further yeah in uganda we if we do send money to uh he has some half siblings in mm. uganda then um we don't have to really when you think about canadian standards we don't have to send too much for them to be able to live long term there uh, and it's uh, interesting how those things differ yeah i mean as you know currencies change in different places That's right. uh but uh yeah it's uh honestly i can go in more depth here but it might yeah. take us longer here but yeah <laughs> but in a nutshell uh, that's my growing up, how things went around me and stuff like that. And so, as I mentioned, I grew up with my parents and my brother in Espanola, along with extended family being close. That includes grandparents and, like I was mentioning before, aunts and uncles, cousins, all within driving distance to each other. You hear driving. <laughs> yeah. Driving to each word. other, not walking around. <laughs> walking. Although you can go for like I and in theory I could have walked to an aunt's house or something, but I I'll admit I didn't growing up. How did talk about how did you go to school? Like you, I, you how did you get to school? I, I always, walked I walked to school and if I'm lucky I had some money to uh, maybe money to to be transported in uh, the buses. Yeah. But how did I took a school bus from J K to grade twelve. That was it. Or I was lucky. My mom at one point, if you're familiar with Espinola, you know this already, but I went to Espinola High School and then maybe, if you're really slow, a 10 minute walk away, it was Sacred Heart Catholic uh, grade school. 
and that's where my mom worked. That's also the, the grade school that I attended. So if but she I, could take you to school, your dad could take you to school. Yeah, so uh, often my dad didn't really, my dad worked shift work. Uh, yeah. So he was not always available in the morning. He would pick us up sometimes, but not drop us off. But because my mom was going to work, she would sometimes drop us off at the high school. Or she would, if she was early, uh, then we would walk over to the high school when we needed to be there. Mm. So that was really convenient. And then in terms of sort of like a socioeconomic thing, um, we were more like middle class growing up. So obviously I always had electricity. Um, you had shoes, I guess, and everything. I never went without <laughs> for anything. Probably had enough pay of I shoes. I probably had you. excess of everything. If you think, you know, you talk about only having one pair of shoes and I probably had an excess number of shoes yeah. although to be honest my parents still did and wanted to instill in both my brother and I like being re reasonable and um, not expecting too many things because mm -hmm. you know moving forward in life that's a really good lesson to have also speaking of shoes like so I remember one time after we had these so back in Uganda we have these sandals as we call them they are made out of uh, tires, like old car tires. Oh, They've okay. cut off. They are cut off that. Those are quite, they were. I remember back then, quite expensive too. So if you had something, it was amazing. But I made a mistake. I mean, well, that was way back before my mom passed away. Mm. So I, I remember I went to play soccer. I believe I, I had them on. You know, it's so cool. You have them and all that. <laughs> and I put them on the side, kind of play, playing soccer. Guess what happens? A kid steals my shoes, oh. so I go back without them. I went crying, oh. and then guess what happened next? I got most, I got more beatings, like because <laughs> now, now I started walking around again without even sandals. You know what I mean? It's like, oh wow, well, you. Because my mom, of course, worked so hard. So yeah. a little background here: yeah, my mom actually used to do um, uh, hair styling a bit. Uh, she did some hair styling, but back then they. There's those little things they used to use and put them into the, the charcoal. They burn. Isn't it a hot comb? I think it's a hot comb, right? So I they, think that's the charcoal. They, then they do the perm and all that. So she used to do that. Also, she used to be a bit of a, you know, like say someone, hey, you want to come and dig for me here, whatever, and she could do that. So imagine uh, mom, going, my mother going through all that and they didn't really live with my dad. Because my, my dad knows. No, was, but they weren't together. Exactly. They weren't together, like two, living together. Yeah. So imagine a mom like that. Bought you some, some, something and then That is gone. That is gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So our third question was supposed to be how did you grow up, family dynamics, so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, we've already talked about stuff like that, honestly. Uh, it's but that in general, in a nutshell, that like that's it. Like it's yeah. uh, growing up here, she had an easier life compared to where I grew if, up. Uh, especially of if you compare to third world country versus first world country yeah. right and really if, if if we're being honest like my parents like I was saying were more middle we were middle class growing up and they worked very hard for their money my father worked at the local um, paper mill he's now retired my mom was a special needs EA in the school setting so not easy jobs also these are jobs though but on the other hand see on this side this is not easy Mm -hmm. But on the other, on my side, still that is easier yeah. compared to what my mom just search, yeah. searching up a little, and also the fact that you grew up with two parents. Yes, that's I another. Not, one. I did not grow up with with two parents. I no. grew up with one, and then she he passed away. She passes away, and I've never seen him. You had both parents. That's right. Uh, yes, absolutely. So it's do you see like these are real you know differences yes. we have in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I mean, and also as a for, for us at some at some point or so. We, most of the times we ate one meal because we you know, couldn't afford having all that, right? And then meat wasn't a very oh, common wow. meal that you had. Don't get me started with meat. Back then I actually ate meat, but the days where we had meat was those special days. They have like yes. Christmas. Not uh, just maybe any day. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving, and you happen to have oh, some meat or oh, chicken or something. Oh, that is a happy day. It's like, yes, like. You're so happy to, and I remember my mom. Honestly, she could, she never really held back. If she bought some meat or whatever, she made sure to give you some, yeah. to give you more. But also, as growing up, because remember, you don't have uh, everything around you, so we could uh, stealing is a real thing as a kid. So I remember, you know, after eating and everything, then you go, 
after your mom kind of goes away and then you go kind of steal another piece of piece of meat <laughs> but she knows how many pieces were there and then she gets you later to give you some strokes like why did you go <laughs> yeah i know but you know that, that's what i mean by say these are things that you grew up around but it's also things that i wouldn't even have any concept of because i had three meals a day healthy meals too, um, you know, meat was a very common thing to eat in my family ho household. What kind of snacks did you grow up with? Anyways? Oh, like a lot of the tried and true Canadian things or Western things, I guess you could say like Fruit Loops and I guess chips, and uh, chips, chocolate, uh, also I'm trying to think of the name right now. Pizza pockets. Oh wow. We used to have those. I used to, I have memories of getting off the school bus after school <laughs> and I keep in mind I have eaten at school go pop in the but I'm going to have one before, din uh, before dinner and yeah so pizza pockets um yeah cereals well, there you have it for me now erase all that that is inexistent because first of all that is what I call a luxury because we could not afford it so in this case when you got home uh, most of the time you're ready so you they tell you, okay, go, 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 you wash the dishes, maybe you're sweeping, you're sweeping around or whatever, you're cleaning up or whatever and this and that. And then after that, you have the actual meal for the day. But in the morning, what we had as a snack or to go with is like, say, if we had made some, maybe uh, the day before we have cooked some traditional food like cassava. Uh, uh, Which are mandazi? Uh, yeah, yeah the, those are, again, those things you have to buy, right? But I'm talking oh. about the traditional things we okay. could have. No, not everybody. We couldn't really afford to make the mandaz or whatever uh -huh. because again you have to buy the sugar and the flour and so on and so forth right yeah that's true but you have like things like say maybe sweet potato maybe you had some uh, maybe cassava maybe yams uh and those are things you have with a tea kind of thing and then you move on uh -huh. so it's completely different oh off, yeah <laughs> and, and also out. just even think about family homes so my parents it's still the same actually home my parents in right now it was a split level bungalow so we had a basement with a rec room gym area for my dad there was a tv downstairs that's where we often watched our tv shows and everything mm -hmm. else um of course electricity so therefore appliances and then i always had my own room same with my brother and and then as a family of four we shared one bathroom mm -hmm. uh later on uh, in the basement my parents eventually did add just like a half bath um, but that was not for most of my childhood that wasn't there that was more like teenagers that, that mm. did that okay yeah see those are like real differences honestly because yeah. I uh, I mean for me I yeah, me growing up <laughs> I know I had in different homes especially different homes but the home as I said my auntie yeah, she I mean I I gotta say I was completely green coming from the real villages and all so on and so forth. When yes. I came to my aunties the one mm -hmm. who passed away, I learned I got to see more things because they, they had electricity of course, they had a fridge, yeah. they had a phone and speaking of a phone, um, literally this is the first time I've seen the phone and this is the most interesting, those phones you dial back. The, the rotary phones. Like, when it goes back, those yeah. kind of phones. Um, oh my god, I, I, that's the first one I've ever seen and I remember when I got there um, and I had the phone ring, I'm like, what? I had something like, what is that? And then I see someone talking on something, what, what are they doing? Are they? Yeah. So um, it was, oh, I'm all green about it and I was young because that's why, again, that's after my mom had passed away and somewhere, somewhere I and made, I made to Kampala. And then he came to be with, yes. Yeah, because I came from, from Masaka. Which and, is a village. Uh, uh, which is Masaka. I know there's a Masaka town, but yeah, there is Masaka. But also, I came from further than that. I came from Meru. Someone who might know that. I came from Meru, so like somewhere further mm -hmm. from from there. So, uh, or I made it somewhere, somehow in Kampala. Again, if you don't know Kampala, Kampala is the capital city of Uganda. And uh, just like you see here, you have different cities here, though. Then I know yeah. you have, like, say, maybe Toronto. Yeah. Toronto, then huge, right? Mm -hmm. But quite yeah, different very sure. different. Some people might hear all of this and say like, oh, how can you make that work? You know, she grew up this way, he grew up that way. Yeah. But I actually think it, we complement each other really nicely because I know what you can have and then obviously he's experienced what you wouldn't be able to afford or mm -hmm. have. 
like mm -hmm. even prime example having one pair of shoes or having limited clothes etc now we're able to look at that and say okay what's a happy medium what can we do now for ourselves and also our child yeah. uh, to show them the meaning of what's important and what you actually need to live because that's a funny thing like that's a topic for a whole other video maybe Absolutely. but How needs versus work. wants yeah. that's a huge thing and because we have different perspectives we can kind of meet in the middle and say okay why don't we try this and then maybe it works maybe it yeah. doesn't i also compromise like so we talk about these things and see how best to go about things for mm -hmm. instance i grew up not really eating out but yeah. yes, you grew up knowing about the eating yeah. out part. But so well, we, we somewhere, somewhere to, we meet in the middle. It was a regular occurrence in my home. Actually, it was an automatic on Friday evenings after the work week for my parents and the school week for us. If my dad was available, like I mentioned, he's shift work. So maybe he was at work. But it would still be the three of us. So my mom and my brother and I would go out for dinner. Or it would be the four of us. My dad would be with us. Mm. So that was a regular weekly thing that we always did and it was something that my parents budgeted for so they made allowance for that in the week so that we could go ahead and do that yeah but again if you go from someone who never did it to someone who really on a regular basis eat out often yeah now here I'm, i joined this amazing family um uh, <laughs> uh karen matthew i mean it's the main family that through, so my parents. through which I knew everyone else, extended families within. Um, I gotta say, first of all, they have bad manners. They are spoiling me so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not right at all. They should be. I should. They should be held against. You know, <laughs> doing things like that to people. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> but anyways, honestly, they're amazing people, and uh, I've heard from different people how they talk about their in-laws, and uh, I have to say. Um, Karen, Matthew, you guys are amazing. You've been you've been nothing but amazing to me. You are not the typical in-laws I've heard of. And I remember the first time I had to meet your dad, uh, or your parents are kind of like, you know, scared. Nervous. I, I was kind of nervous about but they made it so easy, so yeah. amazing. But in his, honestly, he's From the thing. beginning, he was accepted in our family because obviously I was, I cared about him. So they cared about him and they mm -hmm. saw that he treated me well and everything else and so like I said from that from the very beginning he was accepted okay how we met and uh, history of dating and so on and so forth if you want to know all about yeah, that, let us that, know. We that can that's do completely that. separate because it's also interesting that's another story it's a very interesting story <laughs> yeah. but yeah it's, so we won't yeah. talk about that right now in this but honestly we can go on and on and on and on we have so much to share but okay. we're going to stop there for today course like share subscribe gives give us a thumbs up we're gonna say that that's it for today but of course if you have any questions please leave them down below we don't mind doing these types of videos actually it's fun to sort of see our differences and where we meet in the middle often mm -hmm. and we have conversations like this even without a camera in front of us yeah, yeah. <laughs> so please consider a like share or subscribe uh, you can expect videos like this on my channel or also stay at home mom content as well and Thank you so much for joining us today. Please don't forget also check out Ronald's channel Liam and I are often on his so you can see both of us on both of these channels and I will see you next time